this prediction that's right up here. Uh, or just yell at Larry Brooks like every other New York Ranger. <laughs> uh, the schedule came out this week, and the new, and the NHL has got an All Star weekend and a two week break built into the schedule already. And that's of course so the NHL can return to the Olympics. And the question kind of is, after a year of absolute turmoil of going to the bubble, uh, not properly finishing the uh, 2019 season, or sorry, the 2020 season, uh, then the 2021 season shortened, and let's just say lots of controversy with that one. To, it, is it really time to send NHL players to the Olympics? Uh, it, we're still in the middle of a pandemic. Um, either way that you slice it, I don't know whether or not it's the best thing to do at the moment. Uh, I'll be looking forward to your comments on on that in a minute. Um, it's it's a risky venture. You can think about growing the game globally, but the NHL does not profit on this. Now, I am one for Olympic hockey, and I. I love it every single time I see it. It was also times where I could see USA players like Zach Parise and not think, gee, Glenn, you really screwed that one up. Blech. So, um, it's, it's, is everything completely under control overseas? Is it a safe situation for our players to go to? And is it really something that's going to benefit the NHL? That's one of those questions I still can't help, but, but, wonder aloud i know international players want to go play you know the russians definitely want to go play you know the canadians always play for their country you know all that you know america's got a good solid base for this too but is it really the right time should we really just have a normal season that's that's the other thing too and then to have an all-star break and then two weeks later have a, a two and a half week break or, um, or is the All-Star break uh, in with the Olympic break, John? I don't know if there's an All-Star break this year because they, they're, they made still with with kind of like a clause or a contingency plan for the for the for the Olympics. So, um, I like the Olympics. I, I, I think it's I think they're they're great. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That, that's an interesting one. Um, but you know what? Listen, they did the bubble during a pandemic. They did the bubble like during like the height of the pandemic. Like like April, they, they did it during you know during last summer into the fall. Uh, I mean it's kind of calmed down a little bit. The variance is really over um, really kind of overseas it's kind of it, it it's sort of here in ways but i don't know it, it if they could do the bubble in a worse time i think they could do the olympics as long as it's kind of bubbled like they did i don't know i i do want a normal season though i i i will say that i i do want a normal season um but i i don't know i'm kind of torn on this if this was this was bar talk. I'd be going beer. So. Yeah. Well, initially, that's where we we're going to have an entire conversation about this. That's why I, ca- I realized it wasn't in the bar talk, and I put it into the editorial. But I do have to say this: um, I was, I, I stayed up uh, after work the extra hour and a half to make sure I watched the USA Sochi game, and I was a I was a vegetable the next day from not getting much sleep. Or going to go to sleep at 11:30, I think it was. Um, it was it, 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 national national pride means something to me. Uh, one of my earliest videos on this channel was best moments in USA hockey history. Um, it's uh, take a wild guess what number one is, but the rest they're all pretty good. Um, and I, I and I was going crazy when Zach Parise scored uh, in 2010 to, to tie the game, and I was kind of devastated when Crosby scored. It would just be, it would be nice if, if this was if if it just wasn't this year. And um, 
I'm not, I'm not getting um, into the, uh, the politics of this event. However, you have to wonder about the safety of the players. They're doing it right now in, um, in Tokyo. And it's just, is, is everything, everything all, 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 all safe? I mean, and, and, and I'm not, and, and again, I'm not both uh, screaming from the high heavens, oh, we're in the middle of an apocalypse. And I'm also not saying it's not a serious situation. It's just that is something you have to consider. Is it really the right time to be sending players to the Olympics? Now, on the other hand, I know guys like Sidney Crosby, Alexander Ovechkin, this is probably their last Olympics. So, yeah. And the the hockey in 2018 was, I don't want to use the word unwatchable, but it was just not as good in any way. Now, it, you're, you're right. It, it wasn't. It, it, I mean, I love watching the Olympics. That's That was a cool thing. I remember in 2014, we had a massive snowstorm here. And there was like two or three days that we were out of work and I just stayed home, loaded up on beer, just ordered in food and watched the Olympic hockey and it was great. So, I mean, I would love to have that again. Um, TJ Oshi in, in the shootout against Russia was just awesome. I got remind I got the little I got the little flashback seven years earlier in the World Juniors to Peter Mueller and Jonathan Taze in the gold mm-hmm. game in that shootout in between USA and Canada. I mean, that's that's what I felt like watching that. But um, you know what? If the players want to go and there's a way to do it safely, fine. Fine by me. If, if it's going to jeopardize the NHL season, then that's a no for me, dog. That's, that's going to be a no for me. So, um, they can get it done get it done and do it safely cool but um i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna say that the nhl season has to come first uh i'm gonna put this into the stream right now um only because not to promote my own video that i was very happy with but uh also just to give you guys a little bit of a preview what it was Of course, by the way, there is our Chris Kreider right there in the middle. Um, I, I always get pumped up whenever I see that. So I, I and it's not because I made it. Uh, if you're actually interested in what that list was, the, I'll, I'll I'll surprise you with this. Oshi and Soshi was number six. I think one of one of the great things about doing that list is when you realize the the different moments from uh, juniors to um, the obviously it's a miracle on ice. That's number one. One of the greatest moments in American history. Phil, I can hear you again. All right, now I'm back. Okay. Yeah. Uh, no, Sean, we're just having technical breakdowns. So, no. by the way, what do you think about USA Hockey going back to uh, China? Well, no matter that, no matter what, they're going back to China. But NHL players going back to China to go play in the Olympics next year is it a good time for them? I don't know, but it's um. It's what the NHL wants to do, and it's what the players want to do. Put it all down in the comments below. Leave us a like, share, and, of course, subscribe. Uh, but, yeah, the, as I was doing that list, uh, I went through the different uh, gold medals that they won in juniors, and I was surprised how well I have Zach Parise on that list to, to win the silver and to tie the game with 30 seconds remaining. And I, I, I have met eleven. I, I, I thought they were winning that game. He tied it, and then the, just that that Aginla to Crosby play that just that hurt. That hurt. 
Sidney yeah, Crosby does what Sidney Crosby does. That's just what it is. It was, he had no business shooting that puck where he was. Yeah. Now, um, Granny, to answer that, probably I'd say the number one player in the United States, or sorry, the number one American, is Austin Matthews. Austin Matthews, yeah. And by by, I think it's actually by a long shot. I mean, if you want to look at the top five American skaters right now, you're probably looking at Austin Matthews, Jack Eichel, uh, Patrick Kane, Adam Fox, and she's uh, who, who would be number five? Wow, wow, that's a that's a good one. Um, I'm getting word from Nathan Gravity, but I'm looking to see if there's anybody else. There's uh, we're going around that Carolina is closing in on a contract with Tony D'Angelo. Uh, hold on, yeah. Um, Jaden Schwartz is going to Seattle from the looks of it. Um, yeah, Eichel is definitely one of the top five American players right now. Like, just don't anybody who I get people don't want Eichel because of the injury. Austin Matthews, yeah, had Justin Bieber the last two events, yeah. They, that's that's weird. Yeah, Hurricanes closing in on a Tony on a one year deal with Tony D'Angelo. By the way, and, Paul, welcome to the show. Yeah, um, uh, Fra- yeah, Frank Saravalli is reporting it. If you've been following Frank Saravalli recently, Frank Saravalli has been like Adrian Wojnarowski uh, in for ESPN in his NBA coverage. He's in lights out lately. So I think Frank Zaravalli is on a mission to prove that he's probably the best insider in the game today. Oh, really? Because he didn't predict uh, three trades the Rangers are going to make that was going to end up with them getting Jack Eichel and Mark Giordano. Just, you know. Yeah, uh, like like a, like a certain Rangers beat writer. Mm. It's, oh, mm. hey, Enrico. But um, it's, it, and again, it's one of those things that it's just, sometimes when you do that and then nothing happens, then... You end up with egg on your face. You're just doing it. The guy's just doing his job, but it's also uh, best USA goalie, Connor Hellebuck. Yeah, Hellebuck, and then Gibson's right there with him. Yeah. I mean, the, and, and USA is <laughs> the USA is solid on defense. Yeah. That's They're, the other thing. You know, back in defense and in goal. Canada, you have to wonder where their net mining is these days. And that's mm-hmm. why I think the U.S. could beat them in in the Olympics if they go. I really do. I think this U.S. team is set for a long time going forward. And the coach is Mike Sullivan, uh, who was the assistant coach, I think, in 2014. I think he was the assistant to Dan Bilesma. Yeah, and Dan. Uh, it might have been Lavalier yet, but anyway, uh, can you imagine Tony D'Angelo doing a uh, the post-game celebrations in Carolina. You know what? Yeah, I actually can because Tony D'Angelo's a goof, and that stuff's goofy. So, you know what? I, I, he, I think Brody is right. He fits right in with that if, if that's what they want to do. Now, I mean, if Tony can take being chirped by everybody about the Sebastian Ajo play from the Plains uh, round, then I think he'll be okay. But Tony, Tony, Tony's goofy. He's a clown. That's what he yeah. is. So I, I, he fits right in with that type of stuff. I think Tony D'Angelo is a great signing for whoever lands him because he's got to actually behave and um, show that he's a team player. I think there is it is a humbling moment for him. Uh, yes, Alyssa, the situation was handled terribly. There was somebody that said that it shows a problem with uh, Rangers leadership and John Davidson and Jeff Gordon. I'll give you a hint. It's the guy in the other box. And it was only in our second show. So... And the guy in this one predicted after one game, the Rangers were done with Tony D'Angelo. So um, the uh, I think I think Tony's gonna give a team his all. I thought maybe the Islanders should have taken a look at him, get a power play quarterback out of it. Yeah, but they don't have a power play quarterback. What are you doing? I, I get it, but that, hearing that about things like that close to home, you, you know he's not gonna do that. I mean, I guess he would be motivated to come back and really kind of stick it to the Rangers and that uh, that front office, so I guess, and the team. But, uh, I mean, Carolina makes a ton of sense. They, they, I mean, they're losing, they're going to lose Hamilton, but they're going to get a power play guy and a puck mover that scored at a 65-point pace in 2019-2020, and now they can go let Hamilton go and say, hey, you know what? 
we don't need your puck moving skills. We just got our puck mover. And you know what? Now it puts pressure on Hamilton to either lower his price or they can just let him go and see the cap face and put it towards something else. Like maybe a goaltender? Maybe. And uh, you said Darcy Kemper. You said... Um, I still don't get that one. Well, he, he was great in Carolina. I just, uh, not Carolina, Arizona. I just don't know. <laughs> can Georgie give them lessons? <laughs> um, um, and I, I, I wish I wish them luck because I actually think one thing I said about guys, certain guys with huge egos. Uh, one of them that comes to mind is <laughs> Josh Osang. Uh, I said they're not going to be good players until their egos come down a little bit. This definitely knocks Tony down without knowing him, without reading his Twitter, without everything else. This knocked him down. And uh, now, go get up. Go fix your life. Go on with your career. And just and also be grateful with the chance that you, that you have with the Rangers. I'm not going to use the words that you blew it, but it, he kind of... The, it was unceremonious. Um, that was actually our second show together, by the way, uh, that I was able to start it out with... Uh, New York Rangers punch out in the music and <laughs> that was fun uh, if you like that video we got a lot more so check out any of these that are right over here and don't forget to like share and subscribe Ooh, your ideas are intriguing to me and I wish to subscribe to your newsletter